This is e commerce uncensored. Brought to you by Fast Forward Unlimited. We're coming to you fully loaded and exposed with all the strategies and techniques for growing your e commerce business. Hey everyone, and thanks for joining us on another episode of e commerce uncensored. This is episode number 104. My name is Kevin Minnell. 104 or 104? 104. There you go. 104. Right. However you'd like to. 104. 104. Yeah. 104. Right. My name's Kevin Minnell, and I'm here with. Jason Caruso. And Paul Chu. Thank you so much for interrupting, Jason. Very As well. always. I've perfected the intro, and you've perfected interrupting me. Yes. So thank you. And fighting with you. Uh. What's today? Today we got an interesting episode about another question from our Facebook group. Yeah, we, um, you know, a lot of people are posting questions in the Facebook group, which is nice because, you know, we don't know all the answers to their questions. I mean, like some sometimes they're like crazy, especially Josh. <laughs> like he has questions like, "Sorry, dude." I, I, that's <laughs> well, like, Josh, the thing about Josh is it's good because he'll answer the questions. Right. Sometimes, yeah, he'll which answer is the nice. We're like, oh, great, Josh will take care of that. But uh, we had a question, and Paul's going to read it. But basically one of the members were asking like, you know, we we're big, big advocates of email. Actually, we just signed a, an additional contract with one of our clients to do more email and some other stuff. And, um, one thing that they're struggling with is every email that they send is an offer email and they do great. I mean, the emails make whatever, 15, $20,000 per email, which is great. But you only can send, like, how many of those before people start getting immune or right. annoyed, mm-hmm. right? Like, their open rate is the same. It's 10%. And every single one of them are 10%. So, basically, what that's telling me is, like, 10% of the list is just engaged every time they send an and email. the customers are just waiting for the offer. Right. So, it's the same customers over and over. Um, so... You know, like there is a way to get around that. And we're going to talk about that in this episode. But before we do, um, obviously, like our favorite email marketing platform. Well, it's more than an email marketing platform, right? We're starting to see all these new features being rolled into the platform. And it's becoming more of this, you know, behavioral type relationship platform. Really? Yeah. It's not just email. It's like... It does all these things like in terms of like predictive analysis, how much people it's going to predict how much people are going to spend over their lifetime as a customer talks about it. It'll like allow you to tailor um, different flows, which are campaigns or um, well, not a campaign, but a flow is, is basically like a sequence around what somebody's behavior is. So if they, you know, bought certain products, you can talk to them a certain way. And that is obviously Clavio. If you go to ecommerceuncensored.com forward slash email, it will redirect you to Clavio. And if you sign up, we don't make any money off of that, but they do give us credit for you guys signing up. And we're getting a ton yeah. of people telling us they're signing up. Yeah. I mean, we, we hope that they are. And this this whole relationship building thing is so big with Clavio. It's yeah. what their main focus is. Because that's how their company is built. Yeah. Their company is a bunch of young really really engaging type people who when you go there you feel like you've known them forever i mean we went to like clavio boston which is coming up in this september and it's like you talk to them it's like it's like they, they're they like your buddy yeah <laughs> it's like it's crazy so email um e-commerce com forward slash email it will redirect you to our uh to clavio if you want to be part of the group and ask a question like a lot of people are doing Go to ecommerceuncensored.com forward slash Facebook, and that will redirect you to our Facebook group. ton of people are recently have really been signing up and asking questions, so that's awesome. Yeah, it's very good. So, Paul, why don't you read off the question while I have a sip of my coffee? Yeah. All right, so Ben Leonard asked um, if you guys have a rule of thumb or best practice for when when to and when not to send emails with headers and graphics versus when to send emails that are just plain text that look like you typed it out as a, uh, you know, as a letter or a story. Now this, this ties perfectly into, you know, the Clavio conversation we just talked about is like the re- relationship building aspect where email, Albert, you hit the camera. 
<laughs> the relationship building aspect of this uh, whole email thing that's going and you know a lot of people ask or they wonder how they can ever compete with some of these big huge players on e-commerce and it's basically by building relationships with people because your Walmart, your Best Buys, all those guys are just you, you get it your Amazon they're sending out offers all the time that's what they do because they have this big, huge audience that they can, they can. Yeah, and you know to. what Walmart is, you know what Amazon is, you know what these big companies are, but you, they don't have to build a relationship with you. No, and you go, you go to buy stuff from them for a specific reason. It's the, you think it's going to be the cheapest, which we could debate that because Amazon is definitely not the cheapest. But you know, you as a small business, you need to create relationships. And you know, one thing that we hear a lot from people is like, I don't want to annoy my list. I don't want people to unsubscribe. Well, first of all, if your your list isn't buying, so if only 10% of the list is opening on any given day, 90% of them are not, so they're just costing you money, mm-hmm. really. Mm-hmm. But the way to get around that is to send emails. Wait, so one thing that I, I, you know, I was reading, that I follow this guy called, his name is Ben Settle, he's a copywriter, and he's a little bit... Um, uh, brash I guess is the word he's very very like rigid but he says excuse me he says that you know I just learned that the more emails I send the more money I make he's like so I I would send like multiple emails per day he's like so whenever I send more emails I make more money but the trick is not to annoy people right that's the trick how do we send more emails without annoying people because you know, really your job is to try to get as much money out of your cl- uh, customers as you can, right? And the more emails you send, the more money you're going to make. Now, if you send offers all the time, they're going to ups- unsubscribe, they're going to get unengaged. And the way that you fix that is by sending them, you know, valuable stuff. So the client I was just talking about who we just signed up with to do more emails, we're proposing, you know, like an onboarding email sequence, like they, you know, like we have a se- they buy a product and then like they go through a sequence that onboards them like day one. This is what you have to do. Day five. This is what you have to do. Right. And you you kind of like you almost like force them to consume your product or to use your product, because how many times have you purchased something and like you have no idea how to use it or what to even expect? Right. Right. But if you go through this onboarding process where you're actually, you know, teaching people or giving them value, you can you can be creative and stick other offers in there. For example, if somebody buys, I'm going to use a cell phone because it's going to be very easy to understand. Somebody buys a cell phone and then you bring them through an onboarding process. And in that process, you're like, look, we recommend using this case, right? Like. You know, day one, turn your phone on. Now, this is a very simplistic way to explain it, but it's just easy to understand. Day one, turn your phone on. Day two, uh, connect it to your email. Right. Right. Day three, day three is usually when people start dropping their phone. <laughs> so this is this is the case that we actually recommend you get. Now, they trust you, and so they're more, you know, in more likely to take your advice. And a platform like Clavio, as you as they go through these things, Clavio starts to take in all this information about the customer. You know whether they click on certain things. And I got a thing on from Clavio the other day on Facebook that was like, "How would you like to predict when your customer is going to buy next?" And these are the kind of things that allow that to be possible, not just offer after 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 offer. <laughs> <laughs> and to, to speak about open rates like we talk a lot about like subject lines and um you know making subject lines not so make pique the curiosity of somebody don't tell them exactly what's in the email because then they can make the decision right, whether like, or not to open it right. or not at the point of the subject and i think the same thing happens when you're sending out every time you're sending out offers it doesn't matter what the subject line says they just know there's going to be an offer in there and they can decide there anyway yeah so Touching on your point, like you don't want to put, just to give an example of what you're saying, like 20% off of everything. Mm -hmm. Now, there are times where the offer is so good that you want to put it in there, like 75% off all stock, 
50% off of all stock. Those will work because those are high enough numbers. But if your offer is like 15% off, it's not enough to make people want to see the offer. Um, and like Kevin is saying, you condition them to own when they see your email and they're in their inbox, you condition them to know it's just an offer. Yeah. And not only do you condition them, you also condition their email provider like another right. part of that question i don't you didn't mention it but a, 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 the first part of it was like about spam right and how not to get caught up in spam right because when you start when a person stops opening your emails and starts and en- stops engaging with your emails the email provider itself is going to start filter that stuff out yeah yeah and, and to that point when you send more of a storytelling or more value people tend to respond to them and when they respond to your email that's how you get out of the spam folder. They open it and they respond and say, oh my God, thank you very much for this information. That's like the golden rule. If someone responds to your emails, it tells the ISP, the internet service provider or the email provider that this is somebody they want to talk to. Yeah. And not even emails with any links in it. Just a conversational piece that prompts a response from somebody yeah. like I, like josh we talked to him a, a couple episodes ago we interviewed him episode 100 yeah he is doing like i'm on his email list he's doing a really good job at that it's not as easy easy thing to do is to do this kind of storytelling thing and do it on a consistent basis but he's doing a really good just telling people you know the problems that he's has his experiences and that's the kind of thing that we're doing with albert when we you know are sending our emails out it's like we're creating emails that talk about exactly what we did to get to the topic of our podcast when we send out our emails so that's a similar thing that you have to do yeah and it, and it gives you an opportunity to email more often that's what it comes down to just getting in front of people's like faces or their eyeballs however you want to say it and having them see your stuff right and and you know, e-commerce brands have this thing like, oh, my product, my product. But like, it's it's not really like just that. Like if you have, if a company likes you and agrees with your, who you are, they're more, you know, inclined to buy from you more often. And you can like, you know, it's a funny thing. Like I, I think about some of the brands that I'm attached to, right? Like Apple, let's just, just Apple, right? My wife's phone, the Samsung is way better. It's not even a question. I I don't care who you are. You could tell me till I'm blue in the face, till you're blue in the face, that your Apple phone, your iPhone, is better than Samsung. And I, I'll tell you, you're nuts. Mm-hmm. They're just not. But my iPhone connects to my laptop. It connects to our TV here. Connects to my... I mean, it just connects to everything. So, like, I like that. Mm-hmm. Right? So, even though the product to me is inferior, I... I still buy from them because I like them and I like who they are. And and what do you usually never get from Apple? There's an offer, right? Ever. You never get a deal from, from no. Apple. <laughs> they just tell you about how great their product is and and things like that. And it's just that kind of relationship that you need to build it's for people to put their guard down and allow you in. Yeah, and that's a big thing because I think, you know, uh, the whole, you know, gatekeeper type mentality, right? The whole guard like thing is like, you know, people like they need something to make them feel like you're not trying to sell them all the time. And when you send them a story or you send them something like that, that's going to help them, they kind of put their guard down. And they're like, all right, cool. Every email is not going to be selling, even though every email should be an ad. See, that's the trick. Mm-hmm. Making the email an ad without them knowing it's an ad. And because they remember... What they remember a story, right? They, well, right. If you if you if you if you study copywriting, the first thing they teach you is that people communicate in stories. Like, think about it. Like when you when you want to like argue your point, you're always like, "Look, last week I was in the gas station," and uh, you're always it's always a story. It's never just like the facts because the facts don't really mean much, mm-hmm. and no one remembers the facts. Right. Like if you have a product and you're like, you know, 98 percent, you know, whatever. Like, people don't remember that. Everybody says it's 98 percent. Facts are BS without a story. Around exactly. It. You can make up any kind of number. But if you said like, hey, you know, this this surfer, you know, was hit by was bitten by a shark. But he had this 
you know, this special suit on and it didn't go, you know, puncture his, his skin. Now it's like you get attached to the story. So do you guys think it's more effective to use written storytelling emails as opposed to graphic? I think emails? you want to mix both of them. And I think that, you know, you can send more as plain text because they look more like real emails and you can be more like a person. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's always going to be a place for sending a pure offer, right? It just always is. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think if like if you're going to be serious about making money in your head, you should be thinking about how do you send more emails. People are so trained that the emails have to be, you know, graphics, a big graphic and a big advertise, a big billboard. And I think that's what we're dealing with. Some of our clients is moving them over to not so much of that, more of the just plain text type emails. Yeah, I was reading something the other day. It was funny that, you know, like there's this big like the cool thing now is to like delete Facebook it's like a new thing. It's like, like you're cool if you delete Facebook. <laughs> and there was like, I guess there was an article. I forgot what magazine. And they were like, emails, the new cool thing. And it's like, email's been like around for like, and everybody predicts that it's going to go away, but it's not. Email will never go away. Unless there's something that's similar that'll replace it. Like even chatting on Facebook, right? You do that until your girlfriend catches you. Or your boyfriend catches you, and then you don't do it anymore. Just saying, like, there's no <laughs> what kind of chatting. Are you doing? No, I'm saying, like, just I'm saying there's no friendly, there's uh... no privacy. There's no privacy with Facebook. I'm just using a point that, like, you know, email's never gonna go. Email's never gonna go. It's it's been it's been predicted for years that it's going to be, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be replaced by something else. But think about it. You apply for a job, they email you. They don't send you a message on Facebook. Not everybody has Facebook. They don't message you on Instagram. Not everybody has Instagram. What do they do? Send you an email or they text you or Mm -hmm. call you or whatever. So email is going nowhere. So the more you can email, the more money you can make. I have one last thing that I just thought of in my head because it's been happening with us is that in some cases, and I do it myself, like when I go to a website, e-commerce website, and I get the pop-up, the 20% off uh, offer, pop up where I have to give my email I always give I have that side email you know I think everybody's got that side email now spam where email the spam email like yeah I'm just gonna get my coupon and that's it I'm never gonna inter- engage with them again but I've noticed this a lot like that since we've been doing our emails to people is like our the initial lead gen that we get from them they give us some you know random email just so they can get the lead gen but now that we're sending out these story type emails they actually go back to our site and they're signing up again using their actual real emails because <laughs> yeah. they're kind of putting a, we talked about that the other day right Albert when we saw we saw, I saw the same per we sent out an email and then I saw somebody sign up from the landing page of the email and I'm like why is this guy signing up to our email again he's already on our email he's already he's already downloaded our our lead magnet why is he doing it again but he just wanted us to have his actual email so he doesn't miss out on the things that we have to say. Yeah, and that's a good that's a good point. You know, everybody has multiple emails, right? Everybody has that, you know, either Gmail or Hotmail or whatever the hell you use. Um, and the idea is to get into their more important right. email box. And the way that you'd you know, the way that you do that is making them feel like they can't miss your emails. And that's done by you know, storytelling, that's done by tutorials, that's done by, you know, onboarding emails where you're actually giving value, teaching people how to use the product. Because if you think about it, if you teach people how to use your product, you're not only just helping them, they're going to use the product. Right. And they're going to have to buy again. They're going to have to buy again. So, yeah, I I always feel like the more email that you can send, not that I feel like it, but it's, it's the truth, the more you can send. So if you start from that premise, the more that you can send, the more money that you'll make. Now you just have to figure out how do you send more without annoying people, mm. period. Make sense? Yeah. Then we handled that, Paul? What do you think? I think so. Mm-hmm. I think you could have, we could always revisit that. Why, well, what do you think? What, what do you think? <clears throat> um, I don't, obviously I don't know if him asking the question was for this, but I just think he was wondering what to do, like when to send the graphic ones, like obviously send more, 
And like you just said at the end, you know, you you want to ride that line of not annoying them. He's just, I think, wondering if there's a rule of thumb for doing that. There, there, there isn't because there isn't. the okay. different, the different, you know, niches are going to have you know different things to do. I mean, some products are ingestible, so you're going to do that every single day, and then you know you're going to have to test. I mean, uh, w- one thing that I think we we've mentioned on the, this podcast before, like, don't just take our word for it. You know, test. We're giving you an outline of how it's done. You have to play around with those things. I think, and I'm not saying this guy is, you know, this, uh, the guy, the guy who asked the question is, is doing this, but I think people rather be told what to do rather than to figure it out because they, they think there's like a secret sauce to it. Mm-hmm. And there isn't like, you just have to test, just like try new things, test, you know, one one last thing I want to say is, as a business owner, you think that your customers hang on every single word that you type in your emails. I can tell you right now, they forget about it before they're even done reading. Mm-hmm. Right? You read an email before you're even finished. You forgot what the whole email is about. So they don't they don't hang. You can make mistakes. No one's gonna know that you made a mistake. How are they gonna know you made a mistake? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, well, I think a good a good starting point. Like if we were just going to tell them, okay, this is where you could start testing. I think that, for instance, if you were going to do a Valentine's Day email coming up, that's coming up in three weeks, right? And obviously, that email you'd like to, to be nice. You'd like it to have graphics in it. You're going to have an offer maybe in it, depending on your industry or whether you're going to do that or not. But leading up to that, why not send some just some engaging content to them, be right up to that point to get them to warm them up. To that orf- offer that's coming. Yeah, maybe you have a, a customer who bought a bought a bought um, your product for a loved one. Tell the story. Yeah. There's a lot of different ways to warm people up. Also, something else that works really well is tell them at the end of this, there's going to be a special offer that you only can get through email. Now people have to wait, right? Like, mm-hmm. or, or look out for it. They're anticipating it because you're mentioning it. You can even have a link in every single one of your emails that goes to a page that like has like an, a coming soon offer or or countdown to the offer. Like get them like, you know, feeling like they're gonna miss something if they don't right. if they don't pay attention. Cool. All right. Mm-hmm. So Clavio, ecommerceuncensored.com for lo- ecommerceuncensored.com forward slash email. Yeah, our favorite relationship Ship building, building platform. Tool. It's really great. Get yeah. over there and sign up for that. And then get a free account up to 250 contacts. Yes. And then so. go to ecommerceuncensored.com forward slash Facebook and sign up or join our group. We'd cool. love to have you in there. Very good. Join. Maybe your question will be on here. Instagram and Twitter. Twitter is ecom uncensored. Uh, Instagram is. Yeah, just look up ecommerce uncensored, right? Will it, when it come up? Instagram Probably. is at ecommerce uncensored and Twitter is. E com uncensored. It was weird. We didn't have enough letters in Twitter, so we couldn't do yeah. it. But. So get get on our group. Maybe we'll answer your question, like Jason said yeah. next time. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has been episode one hundred and four. One oh four. One oh four. And you can always check us out at ecommerceuncensored.com and we'll talk to you guys real soon. Later. Bye.